uh, uh, to give this talk and I'm happy to see you all. Um, so I'm speaking about Grotendieck rings for superalgebras, uh, this time for, for the queer, the superalgebras. The Grotendieck ring, maybe we should just recall if we have um, a category and we can say it's a abelian or has some nice uh, properties. We can take the Z span of the objects and we can um, mod out by this relation uh, pretending that all, all sequences split for our uh, purpose. Um, and if we have a, a tensor category, if we had um, if we had the tensor product, then it be actually this uh, additive structure becomes a ring. And this is some fundamental invariant of, of our category. And we can, I mean, we, sometimes we study rings by categorifying them, saying that there are Grotendieck rings of some categories. Sometimes we, we study the category using this ring. For example, a projective modules, we know that a, a, a projective module tensor of finite dimensional module is still projective. So we have an ideal in this ring, which is uh, interesting to, to study. If, if we talk about um, categories related to super algebras or some super cases, then we have, we have a Z2 grading. So uh, any, every object has its even part and its odd part. And, and we can, if we want in, in many cases, again, we can, we can say, let's switch. So whatever used to be the even part is now the odd part and vice versa. Then we get another object. It's this, shift is called the parity shift functor. And often, you know, it's it's not always interesting to, to shift the parity. It's always the same object. So it makes sense to, to take a quotient of the ring. Either we say that a module is equal to its parity shift, or we say that it's equal to its negative parity shift in the ring. So these, these are called sometimes um, reduced Grotendieck rings. And these are the rings I want to discuss today, mostly there will be rings of finite dimensional representations over some super algebra. So let me let me explain in in details which which super algebra. So we start with a, a super vector space, which just means it's a Z2 graded vector space. And then the 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 linear transformation from V to V gives us a general linear superalgebra because the linear transformations also have a natural Z2 grading. We have the even, even maps which preserves the grading of V and we have the odd maps which flip the grading of V. And we easily see that every linear map is, is a sum of an even map and an odd map. So, so, um, so this is a basic example of a Lie superalgebra. The bracket is given by the supercommutator, which means that if we take two elements which are purely odd, the bracket is x y plus y x. And this is a general rule for superalgebras that every time two odd elements interchange, we insert an additional minus sign coming from the physical property that the uh, two fermions that um, commute makes um, negative energy. So this is our, this is one um, basic example. If the dimensions of V0 and V1 are M and M, we call it GLMN. And uh, that's one. And another, Example that we consider today is a subalgebra for m equals to n. Uh, if you see how it looks, it's a um, sometimes it's called the second generalization of GLN for superalgebras, and you can see why. Um, or you can present it as um, all the linear transformation that commute with a certain um, a fixed operator v p. You can also view it. Um, as fixed points of an involution and, um, and so on. So these are 
these are two these are the two algebras of of today and we shall discuss the finite dimensional representation representations of them but first let us discuss the root structure so in the case of glmn the diagonal matrices are a maximal commutative subalgebra and that's our cartan subalgebra and it is all even it sits in the even part of the superalgebra. On the other hand, for Q, if I take all the diagonal matrices, it will not be maximally commutative. So we have this additional, um, the, uh, we call it the odd cartan. Like in the odd part of Q, the, the diagonal matrices, there um, they commute with the even diagonal matrices. So th this is, in a sense, one of the sources of difficulty for this algebra. And I'll explain, but so far, if we just discuss roots, I will view them as the elements in the dual of H0 on the even part. Um, the roots we can view, uh, I mean, if we talk about GLMN, then the Cartab subalgebra is M plus N, or maybe minus one. Uh, and the um, the roots. I mean, since the Cartan is even, the, or since we view only the even part of the Cartan for Q, the roots are actually like the roots of GLM plus N. So, um, and also we we can note that for GLM N, a root vector is either purely even or purely odd. So I can call the root even or odd in each case, but in in the Q case, it's not like this. So every root for a QN will have an even root vector and an odd root vector. So the, the dimension of the root spaces are two. Uh, also the wild groups, in, the wild group for a least super algebra is, is, is just the wild group of the, of the even part. So the even part of GLMN is just GLM plus GLN and the wild group is SM plus SN. And then, um, and the wild group of, of QN is just SN. Okay, so th these are our old structure. If there are, please stop me in the middle if you have any any questions. Th this is our this is our setup. And like uh, in the the algebra cases and many other cases, we compute the Gotten Dickering via characters. So uh, we can define characters like for semi simple algebras. I should say now that we make an additional uh, assumption that I mean, it's not only finite dimensional models, but they should be reductive over G0 because I'm speaking about GLN and not SLN. So I'm making this extra assumption and my my modules are uh, graded by the Cartan and I can define character in the usual way. So that's one, that's one definition. I could do it with a super character. So instead of taking the dimension of a weight space, I can take the super dimension of the weight space, which means the dimension of the even part minus the dimension of the odd part. The, Super dimension is actually, and super characters are, in many cases, they are better functions. Now, I mean, in more modern approaches for least super algebras, where they are, um, they are viewed as, a, we can define least super algebras by saying we only change our tensor category. So this is some, and then if we take categorical dimension of the category, then it becomes the super, the super dimension. So in a sense, super dimension is the right dimension. Super character is a more correct character, but it won't help us so much today because super characters of Q and modules are zero unless the model is trivial. Um, I think I think you can believe me that this is the case because 
remember we had an odd carpan. So think about it. You have an element in some weight space and you act on it with the odd carpan. So if you get something non-zero, it has the same weight, but a different parity. And this will somehow, I mean, then you can believe that that all uh, weight spaces have have super dimension zero. And, and that's what's happening in, in this case. So, so even though super characters are, are nicer, and if I'll have Tanya yeah. and I'll explain in detail why they are nicer, they, they are not so helpful for QN. And we will, we will study QN with um, uh, using its characters. And just a, a technical mark. Um, since we are talking about finite dimensional models, then we have conditions on integrability of the weights. So for GLMN, the algebra, we want the difference between the coefficients to be integer, whereas for the least supergroup, we want them to actually, the coefficients to be integers themselves. And for QN, we have uh, the weights are half integers, and for the group, they are integers. So, yeah, the half, I mean, the, the category of the group splits to the integer part of it and the half integer, but the half integer is not a tensor cut. I mean, it's not a tensor subcategory, right? Because if we tensor two of them, we'll get integer weights. But um, in any case, the, uh, we will consider them separately. And in fact, in all cases, we first study the Gotten Dickering for the group, and then we deduce for the algebra. Um, OK. Um, and let's see some examples. Um, so one example is the trivial module. Um, if everything acts by zero, then the cut, then the character is e to the zero, which is one. Also, the super character, unless I would decide that you know it's it's pi of this trivial model, and then the super character could have been negative one. But okay, at least up to plus minus one. If I take the natural model, then the 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 part of V0 have weights epsilons, and they come with a plus sign. And then the, the parts from V1 have weights deltas, and they come with a negative sign in the super character. And the characters, they have, they are the same in the QN. I forgot to put the twos. I'm sorry. It's twice what I wrote. And it's the character. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm confusing you, and I cannot write on it. But, um, and the okay, so that's one um, a, a one example. I mean, two example. We have the trivial model, the natural model, and also we have the super trace model. And again, super trace is like the natural generalization for trace. So it's the trace of a minus the trace of d. And it gives us a one-dimensional representation. But for QN, I remind you, A is equal to D. So I get that the super trace is actually the trivial, the trivial module. Um, and now, if we stare at these characters for a minute, we'll see that um, they they have a, okay, they are of course W invariant, but also the two cases for GLMN, GLMN have the property that if I evaluate e to the epsilon one equals to e to the delta one equals to some t, then t disappears. Like it's independent in, of t. This is a condition we call supersymmetry. In, in the case of the natural model, if I evaluate e to the epsilon one equals to e to the delta one equals to t, then they just it's just one, there's t minus t and it's zero. And in the super trace, it will be like t over t. But in any case, 
this is um, they have this supersymmetry uh, property. And the natural question is whether, I mean, all characters have this property and whether if you have this property, are you a character of an algebra? And the answer is yes, just like in the algebras. So for semi-simple algebras, the Grotendieck ring is, um, is isomorphic to the ring of characters and by some highest weight theory. And we know that if we take all characters, we get all symmetric functions. Um, in fact, we know more. We know that the simple modulus corresponds to sure functions and so on. So that's for Lie algebras. For super algebras, uh, or for GLMN, it was proved, I think in 2007, by Sergei Van Veselov that we have the same we have the same for um, for uh, for supersymmetric functions, um, and indeed, all all super characters admit the supersymmetry condition I mentioned, and if you admit this condition, then you are a linear combination of of characters of modules. This, this time we talk about super characters, so we don't have the entire ring. We have what we I explained in the beginning, the reduced quotient decoding. So it's some very big natural quotient of the of the quotient decoding. So so that's what uh, Sergey and Veselov showed. They they were working with um, integrable systems, and somehow this condition showed up. So that's how they. I know that's what pointed out the condition for them. They also, I mean, they didn't do it just for for GLMN. They did it for all what we call a um, basic classical least super algebra, which means least super algebras with an invariant bilinear form. The the um, classification of cuts for simple least super algebras have a few series. So one series is the basic classical or cuts moody or symmetrizable, whatever. Um, and they they done it for for for, for those and the proof is somehow somewhat um, um it goes in the following way so one side is easier to show that every character is supersymmetric first of all the w invariance follows from SL2 theory and the evaluation property for, follows from SL11 theory because, because simple models of SL11, they have they can be two-dimensional or one-dimensional. The, the, uh, when it's two-dimensional, it's some um, e to the mu the super character is e to the mu minus e to the mu minus alpha. So if I evaluate e to the epsilon i equals to e to the delta i, I'm evaluating alpha goes to zero. And then this character goes to, to zero, and in particular, it's independent in t. And when they are one dimensional, then it has to be a multiple of epsilon i minus delta j, a multiple of alpha. These are what call this. Modules are called ati atypical modules. They are uh, more difficult ones, but again, they satisfy the property. It's true that we don't have complete reducibility. So I'm not saying that you know my module is a direct sum of, I mean, the restriction of the module to SL11 will give me will give me a, 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 a direct sum of these modules. But again, we are in the Grotten Dickering. So for the purpose of character, it will be a sum of such characters and they are all invariant. The, the, other, the other side, um, the other side of, of this proof, namely to show that we actually have all supersymmetric functions is, 
is much more involved because you have to you have to give enough enough characters to generate the ring and the character formulas for least super algebras are not so easy so it's not like we have um sure functions or a good um a good basis and so on i mean now that we have this we also have we can discuss different bases of the ring but it's not we don't have a character formula so 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 they had to they had to discuss uh, generating functions for this kind of symmetric functions um uh, this was what what was done the the periplectic case so in in the classification of simply algebras we have the basic classical which was done by Sergei and Veselov and then there are two uh, types of uh, what we call strange series so one is the queer that I'm talking about today and the other one is the periplectic which we this the periplectic one we described it in a joint project with Ms. Songim and Vera Sarganova. I should say they they also did something nice about the description of of this ring. They they described it as invariant function of an action of of a groupoid. So in fact, they have a formulation that looks just like the one for semi-simple algebras, except the wild group is is replaced by a, a wild groupoid, and it's I think it's very it's very pretty. Um, okay, and any question? Yeah. So this uh, one one is obvious, or in this uh, theorem? The the you mean the representation of SL one one modules? I don't know. Like uh, you, so, the the outline of the proof says uh, if you produce enough characters, that will say onto, na. Um, map that, uh, oh, that you are defining. If, um, I mean, is it enough to to produce enough characters for for uh, for S? I mean, for SL one for say for GL one. I mean, is it easy to prove the theorem for GL one one? That was the question. No, no, no. Uh, like this map, why it is a one-to-one -one map? Like why the character determines? Ah, why the character? Yes, th th this is not hard. It's 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 exactly highest weight because the Gotten ring is is um has a basis of simple modules, and any simple module has a unique highest weight. So if you look at the character or the super character, you see oh, the highest the weight, point. and this is more or less. Oh, okay. Uh, that's that's the argument. But but besides the fact that you know if you change you do you took parity shift of the module you multiply the the super character by negative one. So so you do have this quotient. Yeah, but semi simplicity is not. But, I don't understand. There is no semi simplicity. I should have said right. I mean like the in in semi simple algebra the the category is semi simple. So you know the Gotten Dickering. You know many other things right. But here it's not semi simple, but still you can find the Gotten Dickering. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, yes, so, so that that's um, what they were doing. In uh, I will present now um, a, a, a parallel a generalization for this for Q. Um, for QN, um, I should say, I mean, first of all, this QN, I'm still working on it. So it's a work in progress, but in a sense, it will be easier. The proof will be easier for QN, but somehow the meaning of the proof is still mysterious for me. So, so, so th th this is my message for um, um, for this talk. The, the, Actually, computing characters of QN is easier than computing characters for for for, for GLMN. Um, let me explain. So, so the theorem is the following. I'm starting with now with just the the group QN. So I, I only have integral weights. I'll discuss the half integral weights uh, later. Uh, and the evaluation instead of 
E epsilon i equals to E to the delta j, I have negative epsilon, e negative, here this negative, I should have made it bolder. The, the negative comes from the fact that I'm now doing characters and not super characters. And, and the fact that we have epsilon j is because, right, we don't have deltas anymore. The de deltas also became, became the epsilon. And again, the, the first part of, of the proof is relatively easy by restriction to low rank subalgebras. The other side um, is done in the following in the following way. Um, evaluation. Right? I, I keep saying uh, functions which if you evaluate epsilon i equals to epsilon negative epsilon j equals to t, it's independent of t. So in fact I have a map called evaluation from the this ring of supersymmetric functions in in n variables to ring of supersymmetric functions in n minus two variables by evaluating right if the if the evaluation is independent in t i can just evaluate I'll, I'll here i'll evaluate epsilon n and n minus two so i'll get rid it should be n minus one i'm sorry uh, i'll just get rid of the last two variables and i have something with uh, n minus two variables and the first observation is that the kernel is spanned by characters. What is in the kernel? The kernel is things which are divisible by um, e to the epsilon n minus, or oh, there should be also a minus here, I'm sorry, a minus e to the epsilon n minus one. And and um, and if it's divisible by something, it's divisible by all the permutation of this something. So it's divisible by powers. And and this guy that this expression that we get in the divisibility part, so it's um, is happened to known to be character to be virtual characters from known constructions. So there are. Serganova has this old construction that you do take some uh, parabolic and then um, you do some Borel whale stuff and then you take Euler characteristic of corresponding cohomology and you get you get the corresponding you get corresponding function we look like functions in the kernel so so the kernel is all set actually also for Sergei and Veselov, they did not use it in their proof, but you can see in their proof that character that L, functions in the kernel of evaluation are definitely in the Groton decline. They are definitely characters or linear combinations of characters. And the second observation is that um, is that evaluation is um is subjective um, why would evaluation be subjective because um now because we know quite a bit about um about the uh, characters in uh, of qn so um Brandon proved that uh, the ring is spanned by expressions, which are also some kind of Euler characteristics of parabolic inductions. But these Euler characteristics of of, um, of parabolic inductions by some old result of Penkov are what we call the p sure functions. So there are these p, which are written here, these p lambdas. Uh, Lambda, if you see here, is not a, a partition anymore. If, I mean, I'm sorry, if when it is a partition, it's called p, p sure function. Uh, and then this p lambda will be a polynomial in the x's. Uh, when lambda is not, uh, is not a partition, but it's some decreasing uh, sequence of numbers and we only allow equalities for zero, um, 
Then it is uh, some Laurent polynomial, but um, uh, what's nice about it is that uh, I can find a function, I can find a function, a P function that evaluates to my P lambda. If I just add to lambda two additional zeros, I can prove, and this it requires a combinatorial argument to show that if you add to zero and you evaluate, you get the original one, right? Because you, the larger P will have a sum over SN plus two. Um, but still the evaluation will kill off exactly all cosets of SN except one that you were left with. So we have this uh, evaluation. So every P lambda has another, a bigger P lambda, which evaluates to your P lambda. So evaluation becomes subjective. And now I can say that I can make a, an inductive argument for why the Gotten Dick ring is everything. I can say, suppose it's everything for Qn minus two. I am. Um, I want to prove it for Qn. I am. Um, I have this evaluation map. Everything. Everything in the kernel is in the Gotten Dick ring. Now the map is subjective, so every element. Um, has in every character, uh, I mean, everything in, in the pre image, everything has a, what to say, every element in QN minus two has a pre image in the supersymmetric functions, which is a character. And since every element is, um, can be, since the map is subjective, ele every element is this one pre image plus something in the kernel and we get everything. So, so that's, that's the argument for why, for why we get the entire ring. Um, I think Sergei and Veselov could have made a, another argument, but they, they didn't do it this way. They, they, they did separate, they, they showed that the kernel was there and that the image was there. They did not, do it via subjectivity here. Specifically, it's it's very natural to do it by showing it subjective because we know we have elements which we know evaluate to, to each other, and so and so we get this subjectivity. Any any questions or not? You. It was suggested to to take a, a break in the middle. Okay. Is it a good time? Can I ask a question? Is this, yeah. is a, if I write this ring in terms of power sums, is it generated by odd power sums or something close to that? I think if you you were working with uh, polynomials and not Laurent polynomials, then the, the set of generators is known. I, I don't remember if it's called what you said, probably so. And um, then, you know, um, you know that symmetric functions, uh, if you we talk about symmetric polynomials and not Laurent polynomials, then it's the center, right? It's isomorphic to the center. And the center of QN will be exactly the same. It will be these supersymmetric polynomials. And then I've seen arguments that they are generated by some functions, which are either what you said or some other set, but some known, known set. But, it, the, and these um, generators they are given by some generating function. And in this generating function, it's really easy to see that they evaluate to each other. So the, the, what I wrote here that P one goes to the other P is becomes like evident uh -huh. in that case. So, so and also Sergei so Veselov, they, they work with such generating functions. And but then and then they like large part of their proof was to go from the Laurent polynomial to the polynomial, because you know it's not like in the algebra you can take x one times x two times x n to some large power or some low power and move between polynomial. I mean you you I mean if you'll do it in 
in GLMN, either you increase the powers of X's, then you reduce the powers of the Y's. I mean, the epsilons or the deltas. And here you don't have this one dimensional representation anyway. So, so I mean, they, it's not in the Gottendicking. It, it doesn't correspond to tensoring with one dimensional model. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Um, Anything else? Um, oh, okay. So, so this was for the group, and I said that we, if we want to work with the Lie algebra, we should also allow half integer. So we could also have half epsilons, and we won't have both in the same irreducible model, right? Because by you know, a Cartan weight argument. Um, okay. So if now I'm, I'm talking about only the half, so the half integers. It's true that they don't form a subring, right? Because if I, I'm multiplying, um, if I'm multiplying two of them, then I already get like a, 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 an integer, a, um, an integer weight. But they form a, I don't know, a, a sub additive set, and I know exactly what it is. Um, in fact, I'm not entirely sure it wasn't known before, but I. It's still, I haven't seen it written. And I think it's a nice argument. So I claim that if you are half integer, you must be divisible. I mean, of course, you should be W invariant, but you should be divisible by this product. If you are divisible, this product, when I evaluate it, I get zero. So clearly, the evaluation is independent, independent of T. But um, why should I be divisible? A by this. So you see epsilon i minus epsilon j for just in, just for qn, it's both an even root and an odd root. So what I studied before, you know, I had the SL2 weight and I had GL11 weight. Now it's the same, it's the same alpha. So I, I want to look at it now. I mean, on the point the view of SL2 theory. If I'm a half integer weight, then zero is not a weight. Zero is not a weight by simple SL2 theory. And then the length of every SL2 string is, um, is even. And so I can break my model to some of many things which are of the form e to the mu plus e to the mu plus alpha. And if I evaluate e to the alpha being negative one, then it means that the evaluation is zero. In a sense, I'm in the kernel of, of the evaluation again. I'm in the kernel of the evaluation. I'm divisible by one plus e to the epsilon i minus epsilon j. And so I'm divisible by all the epsilon. I mean, it's true for every i and j, because it should be w invariant. And, um, and I'm. Uh, and I'm um, equal to this product times something symmetric. And this is for one containment. The other containment goes back to this. I mean, how do I know that every such element is a, char a character or a virtual character, um, a combination of characters by these parabolic non parabolic inductions? So, so if I if I want to, I mean, so if I want to add all the characters of a, a for Q and the algebra, then this is the, the functions I should add. I should add to my ring. Um, okay, so that's um, th th that's how much I've I've um, I've gone so far. I'm still working on this project and um, what else what else do i want to do um first of all i oh i forgot to say something i i cheated a little bit because i i let's go back i these uh, functions that span the ring um that I used, I actually have a, 
a power of two in front of them. So, so I, I, I cheated. I mean, I have the ring. I, I, I didn't point it out, but the ring I gave you, it was over C and not over Z. There are some in a, Novel Katesh asked me before, how do you know that um, that characters give you the, the ring? And I said, go by highest weight. But somehow there was a hidden argument there that the coefficient of the highest weight is always one. The the dimension, like there's e to the lambda, one times e to the lambda. Now, if I have two times e to the lambda or two to the power of e to the lambda, then I should take care of it and I haven't done it yet. So um, this is work in progress. Uh, to complete the description over Z. That's one. It will certainly be involve only even coefficients because I know that the super character is zero. So I know that dimension, the character has uh, all the dimensions of white spaces are even. The question is, do we have more restrictions? So that's one. And uh, another thing to do is um is the other queer subalgebras a uh, uh, queer superalgebra so it has q has has a natural subalgebra if we take what we call the odd trace to be zero the trace of b so that's one we could take uh, if we take the trace of b to be zero then I, i'm no longer having super character zero and and I should, I, I should check what it works. I can also quotient by the identity mix. So I'll get a PQ and then I should see what happens for the Gothenburg and all the factors because say for in GLN, if you go to SLN or to PSLN, then you mod out by this character of, of the trace. But now I, we don't have this, so I'm, I don't know yet what what to do. So these are two things, but there is something which interests me interests me much much more, and that's the evaluation, because because evaluation has to mean something for the module themselves, right? I mean, it's it's a um, it's a homomorphism between Gott and Dickens, and um, I think it must have a meaning. And I would like to tell you what is the meaning in in GLMN, and and explain well what kind of answer I would like I would like to obtain. If there aren't any more questions before. Yeah. Okay, so some um yes. So this is a um, very common tool now in list super algebra and it goes in the following way. Um suppose I have in any least super algebra, if I have an odd element, bracket with itself is an even element. And sometimes this even element is zero. But if we think for a moment uh, what happens in the universal enveloping algebra, x bracket x is x times x plus x times x. So if x bracket to it with itself is zero, then x squared is zero in the universal enveloping algebra. So we have an element which squares to zero on every representation. And um, naturally, or idea given by uh, Duflo and Serganova is to take is to take the cohomology in this case. So, so this is a very, very common tool uh, nowadays in, in, in Lee super algebras. And one of the first key observation is that if I do the same for the adjoint module, 
for the least superalgebra, I can take the centralizer of G and modulo the image, the X with G. Then the MX, the model I had before is actually a module over GX. So I have F functor from models over a superalgebra to models of smaller dimension to a least superalgebra of smaller dimension, okay? So, so this is, I mean, just to start, it's, it's interesting. Now, moreover, it, um, it preserves the type. Like if you started with GLMN, then you'll get the GLM minus R and minus R. So, so that's, that's, um, that's interesting property A1. Also, I mean, okay. It's rather difficult because it's not an exact functor. Okay, it's not, okay, it's a nice functor tensor functor because of some cohomology argument, but it is not, it is not, um, it is not an exact functor. So, so first of all, if it's not exact, I mean, nobody said it's going to act on the Gotten Dickling. However, um, we showed um, Crystal Hoyt and myself that even though it's not exact, it actually acts on super characters. So, I mean, these the two two models can be different. They'll have the super characters. Their Duflo Sarganova functor will be different, but it will have the same super character. So, okay, that's that's uh, nice. Now, uh, moreover, if I mean, say in our case for QN, if we took x to be a root vector, so I mean we. X such that it satisfies the property, but it's the lowest rank element possible, then we just go from Qn to Qn minus two. Um, or from GL Mn to GL M minus one, N minus one. In in list in, in the other, in the basic list super algebras, the map we get on super characters from the Duflos Arganova functor is exactly evaluation. Okay, so we knew evaluation of e to the epsilon i equals to e to the delta i equals to t is independent of t. And the evaluation that we get is the super character of the Duflos Arganova functor in this case. This was for super characters. Now for QN, the super characters are zero. So I cannot use it. Uh, models which have different characters can have different um, Duflos-Arganova functor images. So the image under Duflos-Arganova functor can have different characters. But but it's still, I still believe that evaluation should have some functorial meaning because it just doesn't make sense that um, such a nice function will not have explanation in the representation theory side. Um, so I'm, I sort of have this belief that maybe it's not, like maybe evaluation is not the flow Sarganova functor, but maybe it's the flow Sarganova functor on simple modules or on some class of modules and, and so on. But I, I, I don't know how to prove it. And in fact, I, I find, I mean, finding the mini, mi, meaning of evaluation for me is even more interesting than finding the gotten dickling. So I'm, this is what I am currently working on. But, but so, do you know the you. character of MX is not the same as the evaluation of character of M? Do you have examples? I, I, no, I, I have example where it is, but I have examples of, of models, I mean, admitting uh, the same character, but they, I mean, so I can give you one, I can give you two, two models with the same character. One will have that the evaluation is and one when one is not. Uh -huh. 
and and I and I don't know what I mean I uh, in all the cases I had for simple models then it was the case but I don't I also don't maybe I should I should write a computer program or something but I, I haven't seen you know besides the natural model or the joint models I don't have a feeling for good characters to see you know I don't I, I yeah, I, I wish I could say when it holds. Right, that, that's in 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 certainly in GLMN we can build models which you know the 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 the, the character the the character of MX will be zero or non-zero by some silly reasons. So I, I can I can make them with the same characters. Just one will give you DS zero and one will not. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any more questions? If not, let's thank the speaker. Thank you, Shifra. Thank you. We'll uh, be joining for the next talk at 3.30. Maybe, maybe now I can ask another question. Isn't there this uh, connection to Hecke Clifford algebra between QN oh, yeah. representation of it. And does that allow you to get a whole bunch of characters? I, I would hope that you could pull the characters across that uh, correspondence. I, uh, can you say it again? Because I'm not, um, can so, you So my memory is that there is some kind of Schurweil duality between QN mm -hmm. and Hecke Clifford yes. super algebra. Okay, I should, I, I, I should take a look. I, I, I haven't thought um, to, 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 to look at it in this context. I, yeah, I, uh, so I don't, I don't know, but it, in certainly in classical uh, basic short pile duality, that does allow you to pull character and for, or, or at least to construct some characters by using the short pile duality. In this case, I have no idea, but. But I remember yeah, I, I should take a look. The the characters which are known are like these parabolic inductions, and then we somehow they are easy to evaluate at least. I, I uh -huh. yeah, I asked Vera. I don't know if you can DS the parabolic induction. I it's also something I I'm thinking uh -huh. about. Very interesting. Thank you for your talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Sufra. Can I ask you one question? Yes, 